Um, I was on the later side of watching The Wire. I didn't watch until it was on DVD and I spent like, you know, just a couple of weeks insanely binging it, you know, like, uh, you know, back when it was like DVDs where you would get a series <laughs> of TV. Um, and, you know, I think for a lot of people, they discovered it later or it took a little bit for it to catch on. But obviously when you watch it, you realize how incredibly amazing that show is and how well it is made and the storytelling in it. And did you feel like it was special to you, but you kept waiting? When is it going to catch on? Because it took a minute for it to really kind of, you know, have its moment, but well, obviously brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's interesting because, you know, this is going back, wow, nearly 20 years now, right? I think this year is the 20th anniversary of Probably. The Wire. And, um, but at the time, you know, The Wire was you know, a sort of like distant cousin to The Sopranos. The Sopranos was the big show on HBO, mm -hmm. huge, huge, huge. But The Wire, you know, uh, season one uh, was sort of like a sleeper hit. You know, people were like, have you seen this show? It's kind of interesting, you know, especially in the African-American community because it was, you know, that first season was centered around the Barksdales in Baltimore and whatnot. So it became a sleeper hit by season three, it was, you know, up there with The Sopranos as a show that everyone was watching, okay? But for the rest of the world, it didn't happen for another seven, eight years, you know? And when I moved to London, back to London in sort of like 2011 or whatever, you know, people were just discovering The Wire and they were like, oh my God, you're in The Wire? Like, they thought I was American. I was like, nah, mate, I'm from <laughs> London, bro. What are you talking about here? Um, but it is, yeah, it's, 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 and it continues to sort of, people continue to discover it to this day, you know? That was, so the wire, when, when you got that job, it was like 2001, 2002. And before that you did, you did a lot of things that maybe were not as, as noticeable, but when you got, when you stopped studying acting and then were auditioning and things like that, did you what were your other odd jobs or did you have, did, were you able to sort of get right into making a living acting? Um, so, you know, two stages in London. I and mean, I literally, I didn't go to drama class school. I went to a sort of performing arts co college and did two years of everything, you know, scene painting, little ballet, little contemporary dance, you know, and then I came out and basically went straight into work. I got a, a play and the play got me another play and then I was in into work. Moved to America and it just all fell flat on its face very quickly for about four years. And in that time period, I did a lot of things. Some things I'm not proud of, but I did a lot of things. You know Let's what I mean? hear about I, the things you're not proud of. I, I used to sell weed. Can I say that on the show? Mm. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's legal now, by the way. You could yeah. Thank you. It wasn't take that then. up again. Oh, yeah. it wasn't back then. And um, I did that for a little bit just to, you know, help pay the the the, the way. I DJ'd uh, quite a bit. Um, I, I was a doorman. I was a doorman at uh, Caroline's Comedy Club, which is um, fascinating now when I meet the comedians that you kind of remember the English guy with the tall... That's so cool funny. English guy with the funny accent and the little hair. Um, David Chappelle remembers me because he used to buy weed from me. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I did all kinds of things, to be honest. All kinds of things. Well, I'm glad it worked out. And look at you now. 